Okay, I'm so excited. Yay. Welcome, Miss Jada Bell from the Jada Bell Podcast. Uh, we are doing a collab yes. today with yes. Gen Z Podcast. So welcome, and why don't you start introducing yourself and why you got into podcasting? And Okay, well, first of for, first and foremost, thank you for collaborating with me. Yes, of course. As well, so fun. I know. I think it's going to be great for both of our audiences, for the people that you know totally. watch me. Her story is going to be amazing. So we're going to get into that later. But for me, um, the Jada Bell podcast, I had a few videos go viral. I, I always had a social media following. I was posting more pro provocative photos and Ooh, just okay. Yeah, you have a huge yeah. social media following. I gained a lot of men because I used to just post in bikinis and got like, it, got it, got it. You know, more more content like that. And then I got married when I was twenty one, and I got married to a religious man, and I wasn't religious. Okay. Like he grew up in the church, and I, I I thought that that would be fun. You know, I wanted something more secure. I wanted to grow my relationship with God, but I realized like how unequally yoked we were. We yeah. both did when we got married because yeah, like, I had completely different views. Yeah, well, it's crazy when you're. I got married at twenty two, so oh it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy when you get married that young because you just kind of go into it and you're like, oh wait, oof, you yeah. you come together and you're like. So young. So young. Yeah. So much. Don't even know yourself. Background. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, so when I got married, the first two years were pretty chaotic in the sense that I was trying to pull him towards what I believed. He was like, this is the foundation. We yeah. need God as a foundation. I was like, yeah, we do. But it's modern day times. I was very modern day feminist, just very different than his beliefs and how he grew up very traditional and it led to me from me trying to just equal us out that i want to be like a man i want to have control mm -hmm. yes we ended up going into a separation and i was sitting in my separation like literally nine days later because i kicked him out i was like i don't i want to be yeah. happy that's right. what i'm saying i want to be happy you know and i and i would ask him too why aren't you leaving <laughs> Yeah. Like, I know you're yeah. not happy either. Why aren't you yeah. leaving? And he he was like, this is not, you get got married, you know? So it it's not for our happiness. I have a role as your husband. And I just was so confused about the whole idea. Of when you're so young, you have to I was so confused. You're like, what? I thought you get married for happiness. I thought yeah. you get married for fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I just want to like, be off what? the market. What? Yeah, you're like, let's get me off the market, right. baby. Yeah. yeah. I think I, then so many women want to get married. I feel like we don't un have an understanding of what marriage really is. Well, and I think the times now, it's like, and, and, I, and I say that, like, you guys got back together. I got divorced. I will say that people are so quick to, just call it when things are hard and i think normalizing like relationships are hard yeah, like it's are. work you yeah. have to work at it it oh, is yeah. fun and it is romance and but it's like a lot of work it is a lot of work yeah and, and, and just to speed up to uh to get into why i started a podcast is that i went through a separation where i said okay i really do want a relationship with god and i don't understand why my marriage failed yeah because he's a wonderful man yeah. he's very masculine he's everything written on paper what i want why am I not happy? And then I just took accountability of, I think it's just me. Like, I think I'm just, I I think this is just my fault. Like, yeah. <laughs> but the fact that you were aware, that. no, the the awareness and being like, whoa, hold on. I have a, accountability in this. Yes. Yeah. So if, if he, he never called me on my name, he never put his hands on me, he never cheated on me, nothing. So what is going on? You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand because I'm saying, oh, I want to be happy. What more could you get? Because any person you're going to be with, they're going to have issues. You guys totally. are not going to agree 100%. You're not going to always be happy. So you need to work with what you have, especially if you have, if adultery and like abuse hasn't come in, I, I think yeah. that we should work yeah. this out. You're not. And uh, uh, Michelle Obama had said that she hated Obama for 10 years. <laughs> what? what? She did? Yeah. Shut up. She said that. She said, I hated Obama for 10 years. Damn, because when what? they had kids, like he would go out You're open with his buddy. Absolutely. While she's at home with the kids. You're resenting him. Yeah. So I said, 10 years, that's a long time to be unhappy. So I focused on myself. I I was in my word. I surrounded myself with um other Christians, godly godly counsel, and I really grew my relationship with God. And then I applied God's word, and that transformed my marriage when we came back oh, together a year later. That. Yeah, he said I'm with a totally different woman. I was I was I was so wrong. You know, we need God. The foundation is God, and I accepted gender roles. Yes, and we talked a lot about this. We did on the phone. Which yeah, is why we're gonna get into it, y'all. We <laughs> 
So that's a that's and then my video went viral when I talked about that. And I think why it went viral is because I held myself accountable. I never brought in my husband needed things to work on. My husband should have done this, that better. I never said anything he should have yeah. done. Because I, I realized when we especially came back together and even when I changed that that kind of changed him because now I'm a different person. Right. So it's like you're married to a different person, that di dynamic changed. Yes. It actually made him want to be more masculine. It wanted him to work and be able to provide for me and take care of everything. Everything I was I was yeah. wanting more of that we stress so much about or even more help. He started helping more because yeah. I changed my verbiage. Well, it's just the energy is different. The energy is different. Yep. Yeah. So it yeah. changed our entire marriage. Even, even he's changed without even trying to change. I so. love that. Yeah. So a couple of your videos went viral and then you started podcasting. Yeah. You're like, I want to talk more about this. Yeah. And I love that. I started my little, my ebook to help other women from pride and ego because I'm an esthetician. So I, I see a lot of women who are stuck in their pride when they divorce. Sometimes, sometimes it's just, it's just basically out of pride. Like I'm just not happy. And I kind of just help women to I ask questions first. You always want to know who they're married to because the man could just be terrible. You yeah. know what I mean? But I ask questions first. And if it was the, the friends they were hanging around or just certain advice that they were getting that was bad and they didn't really work through it, I, I wrote an ebook about how to really help you to have a better understanding of why, you know, you may be married and how to change things yeah. without leading it to be that far. So that was basically, and just even pride egos for single women too. Because single women today, yes. the agenda is so different it's yes. women saying uh he needs to do all these things for me and then men will be in the comments saying okay you guys have such expectations on the man but how are you as a woman that's yeah that's and true. women don't want to hear nothing about themselves submission what the heck how yeah. dare you say yeah. that it sounds it sounds bad but it does, it's not saying i'm a servant yeah right it's saying i'm letting you lead right? oh i love that so i was talking i think are you I doing no <laughs> yeah no <laughs> allowing a man to lead so i think so I boss bitched really hard and I was always like, I'm not going to be a stay at home mom. I'm going to work like I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And as I've stepped back and realized kind of looking back at like the dynamic of my marriage and why it failed or not failed. I hate that word because yeah. it's not a failure. It's it's everything. There's no Perfect. right or wrong. There's lessons. There's different trajectories. And I truly believe he was a soulmate at that particular time in my life. But I look back and I see like the roles were so reversed and I do think that ultimately led, but I think when you are, you know, a, a woman in business or anything, you're so much in your masculine, which yes. you need that. And it's so beautiful. Like you need those qualities to like run a business and do all that. Do. But I want to come home and I want to step back in my feminine and I want to allow men to lead. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked about how like feminism went too far. Yes. And I think, I think it's really important to, to know that we both possess both of those qualities, yeah. but allowing a man to lead and be in his more masculine and provider role. And as women, like stepping back and like allowing and stop trying to control and stop trying to like lead the show, which is exactly what I did. I was right. so in my masculine. Um, but I like how you said like letting them lead. And I think I've talked, I think there's a disconnect between men and women. Yeah. Cause like I've talked to guys about this and they are, come back at me and they're like, well, like you, you know, I think we've emasculated them a little bit and they don't know where they fit. <laughs> yes. So like we, there's you, this disconnect cause we're like, we want a man, but they're like, but, but we don't know where we fit in this. And like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. very tricky. And so, you know, as a woman, like I want someone to like plan the date. Yeah. Like I've already, I have kids. Take leadership. I'm, Take I'm a leader in my kids, like I, in my business. I, That's how it's supposed to be too. Yes. Though. But I want to step back in my, and and let him lead when I get home. And like, I want you to plan the date. Just tell me where to show up. I don't want to make these decisions. Right. Like I want you to do that. Yeah. I think that I've come to learn, like there is like a hierarchy. So the man is supposed to lead the woman and the woman leads the kids. Yeah. And one thing I noticed, especially me and my husband, and don't have kids right now that he's teaching me everything that i'll be teaching him because he's gonna be at work he's gonna be gone yeah and so while he's at work and he's gone who's gonna be teaching the kids who's gonna yeah. be doing all of that so he's kind of helped me by watching his leadership how i'll lead the kids and that's the beauty yes of how it's supposed to work but right. when the woman is the leader of her husband and the children that's exhausting where do i get my leadership from yeah who's the boss yeah literally yeah, yeah. i think it's beautiful i have a business too yeah so i think it's beautiful because I, I i hear men who are very masculine take care of their woman um, the last couple I sat with, he 
owns businesses, retired his wife, and she is now the entrepreneur of a couple of his businesses. Yeah. So he made her a boss. Yeah. But, you know, they still have... They collaborate together. They collaborate together. He's still the big boss. And then she's like the CEO. Like, he ru- he yeah. owns this. Yeah. And she's the CEO. And I think that's beautiful. Every I think in the world, it runs like that. Yeah. And, I, and I, I've and i come to this realization the last couple of years as I've entered the dating world. And I didn't quite put it together. But I do think there is power in... And I am not saying, like, I have been a feminist for a really long time but now i've kind of stepped back and realized there there is beauty in those roles yeah and there's beauty in that like feminine and masculine energy yeah and um just knowing and like letting yeah it's just so reversed yeah. right now but yeah like i was a feminist sorry, yeah just to piggyback i was a feminist for years and i just came to this conclusion when me and my husband Got we're back separated. To, yeah. And I, I it kind of gives wow. you clarity. Yeah, there is a there's beauty in that. There's in, beauty in the feminine. There's beauty if in If you guys are being led right. That, yeah. Yes. When things are healthy, like yes. a healthy masculine man and a healthy feminine woman. And I want to talk about toxic masculinity later too. Yeah, well, let's hit it. Yeah. Hit okay, it. why we're here. And then I want to talk about your testimony. Okay, of perfect. course. Because your testimony is uh powerful in why because I, I I could speak too, but in why people are I feel like stepping away from the religion, religion. Yes. of it. I can absolutely it is, talk to you. About it that. is religious. It's, it is it's it's religion. The, people are stepping how, away from religion. And and God and, and God's word is what designed the the roles. And yes. people are trying to step away from God entirely because of how much other people have abused it. Certain cults. Well, I have think abused. we can hit that for a second. I think um, so. We talked about our religious backgrounds. I. Um, I grew up Mormon. Um, I left and I have a little bit of religious trauma we talked about. Um, it's gotten a lot better, but I I felt like if you're not familiar with the Mormon religion, um, it's beautiful to so many people, but you wear garments, which is underwear underneath your clothes that covers your shoulders all the way down to your knees. And as somebody who was 22 years old, who or 21, 22, who just struggled with self-esteem, struggled with issues, um, didn't know who she was, wasn't in tune with her feminine, um, wasn't even in her body because she was, I was so young, right? Like, um, so to be covered for me was, felt like they were stripping my femininity away. From you, okay. And I really, really, really struggled a lot. And, um, It's funny, like I was sitting in a meeting before, you know, me and my ex, we had already been like one foot out for a really long time. Truly not because I want to be lazy or or anything or stray from, but I have legitimate concerns with that particular religion and their church history and all sorts of things. I have very fundamental issues. And so those those can't seem to be answered for me. And so it, and that, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I do respect a lot of people in that religion. I have family in that religion, but for me personally, it, um, it's, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. But I will say, I remember being in a meeting and they were like, do you ever realize like, you know, when people leave the church, like they don't go anywhere else. And they kind of were like, almost like saying that super negative, like, do you see, like, they're just, they don't go anywhere else. And I wanted to raise my hand because I was struggling so much on the inside. And I was like, do you want to know why they don't go anywhere else? Mm -hmm. Is because they feel like they belong to an organization under the guise of something else. And when you find out certain things that are truths, you feel betrayed and lied to. Wow. And I feel like people leave religion because of that. Yeah. And what I've realized, and I've come to to realize, like you, people step away because they feel a little bit betrayed and lied to, but they equate that with like God yeah. or Jesus when it's actually religion. Yes. And so people are strained from religion, but then they're kind of pulling themselves away from a higher power. Yeah. And I didn't really, and I and I get why you do that. Like yeah. there's time. There's sometimes you need to separate and you need to have a little bit of space and you need to kind of heal and like work on your issues. But sometimes you get hit so hard in life yeah. with like divorce. Like for me personally, it was like divorce, like kind of mourning the loss of what I thought my life was going to look like mm-hmm. and and literally being so lost in and heavy with burdens that you, there is nothing else to do but get on your knees and, and to give it to God. Yes. Until you can get to that point, 
it's easy to like let go. But when you are at your lowest of low and you're like, I don't know how I can go forward. I don't know how I can continue living. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to do but to give it to God. And that's such a beautiful moment because you're like, I can no longer take this on myself. I can't do this. Like, And so for me, it's been really beautiful as hard as life has been is like to realize like I need help and I can't do everything on my own. And like, I need God. Yeah. And so, but I do think that's why people are strained from religion, but I think they give up that believing in a higher power because they mix it in with, with church and people and religion. Deal with the people there. It's the people and it's not God, it's the people. And so, and I think that's why people are strained from religion personally. But when you go through hard shit, like a separation or losing a, someone you love like a child like when you go through hard things losing a job like right. all these things that life like throws at you like curveballs i feel like w- there's nothing else to do but like get on your knees and beg for help you yeah. know and they'll literally i, I think as uh, humans we are created to want to serve something or to yeah. follow something right and it's because we have the we're we're meant to worship God, right? Yeah. And so even if you reject him, you look for some type of idol. And what what I think even easily happens, because it even happened to me, is that you start idolizing the pastor too, right? Yes. The pastor becomes your God and then they fail you. Because exactly. everybody's yes. they're all humans in a place that need Ooh, God. Yep. So I I because I went from no religion at all, just whatever felt Good. I always yeah. was into spiritual things, yes. but this was when I got with my husband because his relationship with God. I was like, I want that, but I had no idea. I never read the Bible until my husband. Yeah, he was the first one. I gotta silence this. But <laughs> I uh, he was the first one I read. Such the- a weird laugh. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Ew, what? What just happened? I uh, he was the first person I read the Bible with, and it was that was all very new for me, but. I went through different journeys. I even tried different religions. I tried, well, what was that one Hebrew Israelite? I tried, I looked into Muslim, started questioning if Jesus is the son of God. There was just so many different religions that I was studying. And I think that's a part of the walk to know what's the right one. You kind of have to go through everything. And one thing I've learned, even with Christianity, all these religions, I know this is such a religious conversation right now. Yeah, but we'll get we'll get out we'll of get it. We'll get out too, of it yeah. in a second, yeah. y'all. Um, but I realized that all of them have like pagan tendencies. So all of them have things that are outside of when Jesus was walking, what he was teaching. All of them do things like kind of how they want to do it. Like everybody adds some other sprinkles to it or overdoes certain things or has extremes to it. Because yeah. I've learned that when I just read the word or Jesus's teachings, they don't even celebrate holidays. Yeah. So like in the Christian community is so big on that. Like yeah. this is Jesus' birthday. We have to do this. And they'll look at me crazy that I don't do it. Yeah. So I just realized like everybody, it's a really a relationship with God. And it's such an intimate personal relationship. And I think it's also important. Like I think Again, people have so much religious trauma. Like when you say God, like people, it gets weird sometimes with people. Yeah. And I'm just like higher power, source, energy, whatever. But there is beauty in honing in like on a higher power, like and realizing like we having faith in something that's not seen like. But you don't get there until you like have been like at the depths, yeah, yeah. the lowest of low when you realize like I cannot do this alone. Yeah. Like That's, I need help. When I went through my separation after already studying all of these things. That's when I turned to relationship because I had tried to do the whole covering up from yeah. head to toe. Yeah, I tried. I tried it all. I tried to get into different religions and try it. And it was when I was literally crying on my knees. Viral, the video went viral when I posted it later. I, I said, I, I just need video. you. I, yeah, I, I got. Should I show you right now? Yeah, it's a it's a quick video. Maybe we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, but and I didn't even know if I was going to come back. It was leading to divorce. If I didn't change, we would have been divorced. Yeah, it, it really was. And my husband was already ready for a divorce. Like yeah. when I came back around, because he didn't know that I was spending all the time alone with God. He didn't yeah. know that. He thought I'm just partying, wilding, back <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. just all right. I yeah. I tried it. I failed. I got he with freed. the girl I was unequally yoked with, and I'm going to take my L. That was my husband. Everybody I'm thinks take that L. <laughs> people will come under this saying, "Oh, he waited by the side for you the whole time. What a great husband!" No, he's a human being. He said, "You kicked me." 
out. Yeah, no. You wanted nothing to do with my leadership. He took he he took accountability that he got with me somebody who wasn't equally yoked to him who wasn't on the same belief system. Yeah. I was willing, but when we got it was too much. And yeah. so he just said, "I will love you always." I'm gonna take my L. I'm ready for I'm divorce take my because L. you wanted divorce. Yeah. So when we stopped talking, we went no contact, and he had no idea that the whole time you were working on yourself so hard. I yeah. went to therapy, I got diagnosed. Um, I'm trying not to say um and like so much, oh, but it's fine. fine. <laughs> I'm trying to think so fast. I you took care of yourself. You I went did. inward, and I think that's the that's the key is yeah. always going inward and but having I, an accountability. I accepted if I was going to get divorced. Yeah. I accepted it. I said, God, if this is not yeah, what I, if if it leads it's to divorce right and my husband doesn't. Me. Yeah. But I also know that I signed up for marriage. I will take the heat if my husband wants to come back into it because I didn't try hard enough. Yeah. Like yep. I was, I was self-sabotaging the whole time. So if I get another chance, I'll do it right. But I also had accepted in order to even fully love yourself, you have to be doing it for you anyways, not for the yes. marriage. Because I at first I was trying to change for my husband. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm gonna do all these things. And no, then my husband only, will it'll only last for so long. It'll only have to change that's for yourself. Kinda, yep. Yeah, that's kinda a, a, a narcissistic way of thinking that I'm only gonna change for you to love me. Yeah. I had to do it for God. And once yeah. I did that, change so much. Yeah. And, and then and then we saw each other again and and he said you're, you're talking different. so different yeah i didn't even argue with him I, yeah. even when he was mad at me i said you have a right to be mad at me he's yeah. like what you're not going to deflect you're, you're not, not going to deflect no you're you're have every right yeah so i'll show you the video and then we'll we can move on to more yeah, detailed conversation see. so it's the second one 6.9 mil right there where you see my husband all right i got married at 21 years old it might go fast. Oh, our service is sucky. So this video is just showing her kind of journey. Oh, if the service it's not is dang it. Okay. So you went viral and then yeah. I love that. Yeah, I'll have to send it to you after. Okay. But yeah. If anybody hasn't seen it, I definitely recommend. Yeah, we could probably put it up too somehow on like one of the clips. Yeah, so they could watch yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But so I love that for you guys. I love that. Um, masculine and feminine energy. So tell me about the Jalen video. We, you were talking to me on the phone. Okay, yes. Yeah. So right now there's a video going viral of this man. I will say I don't like when people do, because people have been doing this to me where they take clips that I say and get yeah, take out and context. Yeah, true. Yeah. So I'll just say it. that if this ever comes up to him, there, I don't know the full context. I don't know him. And so I would just speak on, I seen what he had said and I'll speak on, I think the issue right now with femininity and masculinity. So this guy, I saw a video, he said he claims to be a soft and sassy feminine man. Okay. It's very, it's a very interesting, again, I don't know his personal life, but I will just say that I went from there and I watched a video where a group of men were sitting down talking about what they believe masculinity to be. And there was majority of them taking on this soft role right they are wanting to be more like women and so that took me on to learn what masculinity is and there's an there's an agenda right now where they're trying to make men not masculine yeah. because then the woman will want to dominate them and this all goes back to the bible eve what does she do in the garden i love the principle she tried to dominate her husband in the sense of I know best, right? Because he wasn't standing up to his role. He's uh -huh. supposed to tell her, this is not what we're doing. Yeah. I got clear instructions from God. That's leadership. And she, he wasn't doing so. So she made the decisions for both of them and it led them to sin. And it said that the that women will always be cursed with wanting to have dominion over a man. And I think today's generation, if we're since we were talking a little bit about, about religion, I think that we are struggling with the curse of Eve. It's so funny. You know how people will say, I, if it, I was Eve, I would have not, never ate that apple. We're eating it every day. Like yeah. we're trying to have dominion, so much power over men. I think the agenda is to make men soft and weak so that women have to step up and now be masculine. Yeah, the roles are, yeah. Yeah. 
and then and I think men are confused right now. And you were kind of talking about it that women over where do they where, stand? Oh, and we are. I'm going to say the power women do have is crazy because we're more educated than men today. It's the study show. We're the ones getting all the degrees. We're killing in the workplace. We're killing it on in Hollywood. We're killing it. On, they're making women superheroes, and we're falling in love with the, those characters. And men aren't even like the superheroes anymore. Like it's the agenda. The agenda or what's going on today? Women are outscoring men in every way. But it's unfortunate because now what do you do? You're just sitting back, playing video games, not doing anything. You're yeah. not doing anything but accepting now more being feminine yeah. and weak. And I think uh, it's so tough because I think um, I was watching the video you sent me of that guy. I think it's a balance because I do think it's beautiful that, that so we, you know, you come from like my parents' generation where like, that generation had like no feelings and no emotions oh, yeah. and those men were like totally repressed. Now we have like my generation, which is like, I feel like we're healing like generational trauma. Yeah. And then we were, we're wanting the men to have emotions and express. So I think it's like this delicate balance. Cause I do think like they need to be in tune with their emotions, but, express that, yeah. but somehow it gets, the scales get tipped because I feel like at the same time, like, we as women want them to lead and to and to provide and like and that's such a hard thing because I think that's a lot of pressure on men too. I've talked to them. They're yeah. like women only want men for their money, blah blah blah. And and I'm always shocked by that because that's not who I am. But I've always like worked and like I th that is not something that I look for in a guy is like how much money he makes. It doesn't even like question. What I do look at is like, do you have the drive like yeah. to provide? Like, do you have, it doesn't matter like how much money you make, but it's more of an energy thing to me Yeah, is like, do you want to get better, strive to get better? And that's not even in business, like your personal life. Are you, yeah. are you working on like being a better person, healing your shit? Like we all have shit. We all have baggage. Like, um, so I think it's like that delicate balance because I do think it's beautiful that men are more in tune with their emotions and that they can be more nurturing in that sense. But like it becomes weird when they they stay in that role and then they don't because we each possess both. Yeah, but they stay in that role and they don't like rise in the other ways where it's like yeah the the like the provider of the household the and it, and when I say provider of the household I don't necessarily mean like you have to make more money than than the girl i'm just saying it's like an energy thing it's a protective yeah. energy where it's like i got you i like i have this right. so that we as women can feel safe and secure and we can kind of step back and like let them lead it's right like, to me it's an energy yeah and it's it's not necessarily about like money because I think a lot of guys like I I've tried to talk to guys about this because I'm like, yeah. please, like this is my perspective as a woman, like in the dating field right now. Right. Please like tell me your perspective. And I basically feel like we're both so disconnected. Like what they say is like, we don't know where we stand. Like you, you, you know, these women out here are like you, I can open my own door. Like I can do this, blah, 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 blah. Like where do they stand? Yeah. And I'm like, it's because we've we've pushed way too far yeah. and not really allowing them to like be who they are. But right. so, I, it, so that guy, I like get what he's saying. Like soft and sassy is very weird, like terminology yeah. to me. I don't want to sassy. Yeah, no, we don't want sass. Like what? That's a weird terminology, but I, I like that the men are becoming more in tune with their emotions and things like that. But I think it's still this masculine role of like, providing and protecting and yeah. again i say that as an energy it's not like you have to make more money than me and prov it's just i want to feel safe and secure like we got that like i have i have this you right. know so to me that's my perspective but yeah, like yeah no i totally agree i so i'm coming from the perspective i think too from surrounding myself with not only like my husband but like my dad my brother and a lot of my husband's male friends yeah. embody, and that's why he can do it. They embody masculinity well. And one thing I noticed is like before, men had tribes of other men, so they had a place of counsel. Ooh. And right, wait, I like that. So that's what they really We're do missing. need. Yeah, and that's what they're missing because when you're isolated by yourself and you're trying to contain and you're being told not to have emotions, I think that my husband, he 
lets out his emotions well. But one thing he's learned how to do as a man is have uh, discipline with his emotions. So not having emotional outbursts mm. and knowing how to contain his emotions properly. Yeah. That's a masculine trait to have. I think sometimes they can get lost if they're not getting proper guidance yeah. on that. Sometimes they'll be to told, try. don't have emotions versus how do you contain and how do you manage your emotions properly and Ooh, healthy? I like that. I think even as women too. We need to do that too. And Absolutely. that's where we do have more emotions because a this term toxic masculine is interesting because a study sh the studies that I've read, men that are abusive and have emotional outbursts have low testosterone. They actually have more estrogen in their body. So really? they have the female the what we have a lot of estrogen in our body they have they're producing more estrogen so in a way why why i say emotions are of kind of more of a feminine trait like not even because we all have emotions that's not the right way i'm trying to say it having emotional outbursts is not toxic masculinity yeah it's all it's more toxic femininity yeah like he's not learning how to, he's not getting proper guidance and leadership on how to contain that and then for women yes we do too and that's where the man comes in to help us because regardless we have too many hormones we then you go through i you you're a mother yeah i have a sister who's pregnant right now yeah just it's watching the wild. emotions it's very interesting yeah yes but she has a masculine husband you know who's able to contain well he's not joining her in her emotions right he's outside understanding and, and seeing. protecting and making her feel safe and seen that's mm. and ah, that's that. masculinity yeah i gotta read the study masculinity is to it's us beautiful is, it's needed is making us feel safe and secure and that's what it is so the word toxicity is the opposite of masculinity so they're not even supposed to be next to each other. Toxic, tox, toxicity means the extent in which something is harmful. When you look at masculinity, the mas masculinity keeps the environment safe and protects women and children, embraces responsibility for his, for his loved ones, and brings security. That's the opposite of toxicity. Wow. They're not supposed to be next to each other. Yes. Damn, girl. I know. I'm yeah. like, you've been reading up on I stuff. Have. Yes. I have. That's actually really beautiful. It's really beautiful. But I want to go back to like having a tribe because I think that is so key for probably men. I mean, and again, I, we're just women coming from our perspectives. perspectives yeah. If men are listening to this and they're like, you guys are so off base. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. open to that. <laughs> as, like, I, I'm just saying from my perspective as a woman, yeah. this conversation. But I kind of love that because as women, we always have good girlfriends always don't we we have beautiful female friendships like i have felt more love in like my platonic soulmates yep the, it's such a, the power of womanhood is so powerful and beautiful so i think like i love that having men having a tribe and a council and like having people to bounce off but like i do think men are more isolated these days and i think that you know our grandparents generation or my mother's generation too yeah they weren't they weren't uh they weren't having tribes they were probably far more isolated my mom she know i don't want to speak too much on her life but i know her brothers and stuff were in foster care yeah so like you're getting stripped away from any type of family and yeah. you're probably just put thrown up in a room you don't know where to go so of it's course scary. that's gonna yeah. as a man who has to be self-disciplined withhold his emotions so that he can help his family be safe you're dealing with a bunch of trauma and emotions and now you don't know where to you're supposed to go to whereas my husband has always had a, a lot tribe. of got a tribe. I a love and they all that. are very. They all grew up with fathers in the house, or which is so crazy. His best friends all have fathers. Yeah, right. So yeah. then, and it just it, we think like, oh, if he treats his mother well, well, that's important, right? He has a great relationship with his mother, course, but yeah. he needs a great father. Yes, and you're stripping that of the household. So now these men also don't know how to be men because they don't have male leadership. Yeah. So having a tribe that's really like profound. Yeah, is surrounding yourself with people. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know everything. I just am speaking off what I see too. Yeah. Because I know some people really try to debate you like, oh, you think you know. And I don't. I'm just watching and observing. And I'm. Yeah. And I'm just speaking from experience, like leaving a long term relationship and entering the dating world. I've just found that it's it's been really difficult. And also realizing my part and the demise, kind of like the demise. That's such a negative word. But like just kind of the ending of my marriage and how the roles were so reversed. And we were so young that we just like did not know how 
to f- to work on that. You I know? just I actually actually want to do talk a little bit more about that yeah. because I know when we talked about it, you think you say that the gender roles being flipped is what really led to you think. I I ultimately feel like there was just an imbalance of roles. It wasn't everything. We both ha- came from trauma, yeah. like um, yeah. So I and I've talked to him a lot about it. It was just I feel like we trauma bonded. And we both had just some needs. And I think we were so young that we didn't, that's how we came together. And I don't think we realized how to get out of that or heal that. Mm -hmm. And I think we both had work to do and we both, we, we did it on different trajectories and it was just kind of imbalanced. And, um, but like I said to him, or he's told me multiple times, it was like, it was happening. It was happening no matter what. I, I do say like, Going through it, I I feel like we should probably have worked harder on that and fought for it. But I also realized that um, everything happens for a reason. And I yeah. we did both feel really strongly that that particular thing needed to happen. So when the story unfolds, we'll probably all realize why it had to be. Yeah. But I've been very like introspective and like realizing like, yeah, I mean, I also have definite roles into the ending of that. Like, and as he does, um, I just, again, think that we were so young. We came from some trauma. We both just, it, we just didn't know how yeah. to fix that or change those roles, you know? And like, um, and again, when you're dealing with like, tra- it's just hard. When, when you're dealing with trauma, yeah. Yeah, and baggage and you just, yeah, you're learning and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, I do think the roles were reversed heavily. And I, and I just don't think we knew how to like get out of that, you know? Well, that's a, that's the number reason why divorce is happening. I know that it's mostly followed by women, but it's it, the, the number one reason is from emotional unmet needs. Yes. And that's a, that lack of security and safety yes. and being provided yeah. for. So yeah. regardless, I think no matter what, we're, because I'm at to the extreme point right now in my life, I am still young, but I'm just not, I don't even think I'm even a little bit feminist. I think I would have been a feminist. I think we have to determine the definition of feminism today. And yes. I know that there's so many different waves of feminism. Yes. And all but one of them I'm for, like the first one, you know, yeah, yeah, where yeah, we yeah. fought to be human. Yeah. Then they just started adding on more stuff to more issues to have. And now today it's to be equal to a man. Yeah. And I just don't, I just don't agree with that. Plus, if you look at the statistics after we fought for that, women are unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. Having that role. So that doesn't. So you feel like you're on the extreme end? I'm in the yeah. extreme right now. I feel I think like I'm yeah. studying so much. But I think like life is an evolution and it like is. every, like you might change when you have kids, like you might, whatever. I feel like I'm very like in the middle. I, I definitely am all for women's rights. Um, I just think that we went too far with it. And I think we've, we've missed the mark because I, hell yeah, I love my job. I want to work. Like I want to be provider, but I also want to be a mom. And I also want to come home and step into that feminine role. Yeah. Like I, I want to, I want that. I want to boss hard. I love my career. I want that. But then I want to come home and step into a different role. And I want to be more of a nurturing and a mother. And I want to be in my feminine energy. And I want like, I want a man to lead. I think we've emasculated them a little bit. Yeah. And, um, and so it's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Well, I think I think that I wouldn't be fighting for no the the how it was in the before where women couldn't even no, have hobbies yeah, and be no. a boss. Yeah, no, not at all. It's just really accepting like there's beauty in the Like when roles. you come I think in a marriage. Yes. I think in a, in marriage, a marriage or a relationship, yeah. Or a relationship that there's roles. That's yes. it, really. I don't I don't just don't believe in the what they're trying to make men out to be because then they're fighting themselves. Yeah. They're yeah, fighting yeah. their natural way of stuff and they're feeling insecure if they are more yeah. masculine. Right. They're called like misogynist. I was one person I do I haven't watched all his stuff and I know that he says some crazy stuff so i will be honest with that but i like andrew tate i've watched his stuff okay i don't watch andrew you don't watch andrew tate Uh, he's called a misogynistic all the time yeah he has some said some outlandish stuff but i also watched videos where he says he purposely does that because it's just sarcasm or he tries to see he's dealing with a very emotional person and he's trying to like bring out certain emotion he just does certain things a certain way for whatever purpose but he really breaks down masculinity well when he's teaching about and talking about it like he was saying like men um he said that when 
uh, before, when a when a father comes home and makes a big enough impact for his children because he's out there going to war, he's out there inspiring his kids. He can come home every once a month, really, because he, the children know he's out fighting for a cause or he's fighting to protect them. Yeah. So children at home, like, daddy's my superhero. Yeah. And he comes home, he, all he has to do is step in the door and children listen like that. Because yeah. the mystery of a man of uh, that is what gives the children that healthy fear. And I'm talk- not talking about, because I don't want that to get taken out of context when they say the joke of... Um, the father sleeps to go get milk and never come back. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm saying that yeah. when the ma- the the men not being home all the time because they are working, it helps balance out the home too. Where mom's home nurturing it makes children feel very safe, but dad going out fighting for a cause or he's the reason why we have the roof over our head. They have that healthy fear because you know you have that healthy fear of um the you know the most high of God. Yeah, because there's a mystery to him. It's like I if I make if I do that. And I know that's going against God. I don't know how God's going to feel about that. You know, I don't, he's not so in our face all the time, you know? Yeah. Uh, So all to say is I'm just learning that uh, with Andrew Tate is that he really breaks down the beauty of being a masculine man, of working, even going to work, you're not being home. The children are like, you know, when dad gets home, if mom says when dad gets home. Yeah. You better watch it. Yeah, you know yeah, he yeah. don't even have to be there. Yeah, for the children to be like, oh, I want don't want to disappoint dad. Right, you know, right, right, right. And but again, mom being at home too. So when both parents are gone, mom being at home is what makes the children feel so safe that there yeah. is a parent there. Yeah, right to nurture, right. to love, to be like, what are you feeling right now? Yeah, it's okay, let's work through this. Yeah, kids feel so safe with their mothers. That's why yeah. they'd be the most obnoxious sometimes with their moms too, because they know mom's gonna make sure yeah. I'm okay. Right, She's right, right, right there right. when. I fall yeah. and it's a, there's that beautiful balance if mom and dad are both at work all day and some random strangers have the kids yeah. all day they don't they're not getting that like where's the the balance of what I need from my father and what I need from my yeah. mother you know yeah. yeah I come from like a little different perspective because I do work mm-hmm. so and I have a nanny and but I do think like it's just a balance what I've realized is I think what's most important as a mom is to know so deeply what makes you fulfilled. Mm. Because for me, staying home did not bring a sense. Like, I love being a mom. Mm-hmm. Like, I love, 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 love being a mom. Like, I'm obsessed with my kids. But staying home for me personally really, I don't, I know. And it, and it's tough because I, I am all about, like, the feminine masculine roles. But I, for me personally, I, I, really struggled like with my mental health being at home and it's just it wasn't for me so I think it's it's tricky because it is yeah like and I think it's that war between like working moms and stay-at-home moms and I and I felt judgment from stay-at-home moms and and I'm sure they feel judged from working moms it's like this this constant battle but I will say I just think that knowing who you are as a person and as a woman and what you need to be the best version of who you are as like a a partner, a wife or a girlfriend and a mom mm-hmm. for so for me it was working so cuz I wanted to have my skills and I wanted like that gives me a little bit of a different sense of fulfillment yeah. than just my kids. So it's tricky cuz I think some people thrive being stay-at-home moms and like it's amazing. They love that, yeah. And they love it. My friends, they're like the best stay-at-home mom. But for me it just didn't work that way. Yeah. So I also think it's like I'm a better mom because I work mm-hmm. and That way I can be home, like I can get my sense of like accomplishment in another avenue, not just being my kid, like my, my children's mother, but like I can get that and then I can come home and I can and do that. Right. But if I were to be stay at home, I feel like my kids would feel my energy and how unhappy I was. Mm. And so that's true. Like, I think like there is a level of like knowing so deeply who you are and what you need. How can I be the the best best version of myself to be a good partner and a good mom? And for me, it was like it was working and being a mom. Mm. Well, there's like that war between the two, you know, it's so it's so hard, which it shouldn't be. No, I actually went to a... um, I went to with my husband to a I don't want to say Bible study. It was a church event. Yeah. And the guy was a millionaire and there's a lot of women there too. Yeah. He said that Jesus had entrepreneurs that funded his whole resurrection and one of them was a woman. 
No way. I love that. I needed to hear that. Yeah. Because I always felt like I'm driven to have different businesses. I'm a business owner as well. And I do social media marketing and I have all these gifts. So to just not have them or just to put them away and suppress them, I wouldn't be contributing to my home. And even the proverb, they had to break it down for me to understand too, because when I was understanding gender roles, I questioned that. Like, am I supposed to give up what I'm skilled at? But no, because then they broke down even the Proverbs 31 women. And again, I'm I love I, I my whole foundation is off God, so I bring it right it. back to yes. him every time yes. because I feel I feel then it's just always opinionated on what I think versus okay I have a source to go to to yes. help me understand. But the Proverbs thirty one woman was out working, yeah, she's out working. and a mom, yeah, you know to contribute to her family. It was all to contribute back to her right. family, to her husband, to the household. So that gave me the reassurance of no, I'm still going to put my skills to use. I just I personally will. I don't even have kids. This is a whole different. This could be a whole different podcast session. But I just don't want to. I want to homeschool my kids because yeah. of the school system. You know, just I just want them to have a foundation that I never got because that's what led me to take so long into my adulthood before I finally understood. Yeah. Started yeah. finally started reading and understanding things. So I just want them to learn from me first. But we still even talked about them. You know, maybe going to school later. Yeah, I stuff. think whatever it's, whatever again, works it's whatever for works for you is yes. that's the thing that I think. I think when you are operating out of what I should do. As opposed, and I and I lived my life like that for years. I operated of what should I be doing because of how I was raised or how my religion wanted me to do, mm. and I wasn't living in authenticity. And what it ended up being was I was depressed. And so I think that's what it comes down to is knowing who you are so deeply and what works for you. Yeah. Because if you do things that you feel like are expected and it's not in alignment with you, you're going to be depressed. You're going to be sick. You're going to be unhappy. So yeah. like, I just think that's like the that is the crux of like life is like knowing being willing to disappoint people like knowing who you are and loving yourself so much and like choosing yourself over everybody else and like being willing to disappoint and like cutting out the noise because it's like you know if that works for you in homeschool and give them that foundation that's like beautiful yeah you should. And, and it's, I feel, I think it's what you're being, you're called to do. Cause what yeah. you could be called to do is you might have to leave everybody and go walk in the desert for six months because God called you to. I don't know. Exactly. You know, to go, yes. to go do you something. You have to leave to bring home the medicine. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I, I saw, like I saw that. And it was like, sometimes you got to leave the tribe to bring back the medicine. medicine you got to leave. Oh, I like that. And so sometimes like you do have to go against the grain and you have to walk a lonely path yeah. and you have to experience it's like being calling. separated. That's you not everybody. Some people will totally be against that. You should not be separated whatsoever. One thing me and my husband. whatever they want. But look, yeah. it led you back to each other. It did. You in have a better way. to trust like life and your intuition and or whatever it is if you feel like god what do i call it i call it like downloads like i get downloads like things don't have to necessarily make sense but you have to continue going for that and like you had to leave the tribe to bring back the medicine yeah. and in that lesson of leaving you found god yeah. you found out who you were you yeah. took accountability like you wouldn't have been able to do those things if you hadn't walked that path. I agree. And so sometimes you do have to like leave yeah. and experience it to bring back. I think that's why God allows everything to fall apart anyways. He, he's allowing it. It's not that he's the one destroying everything, right. but he's allowing it because how do you find what you really, your foundation of yeah, what you believe in exactly. if you don't? So even my separation, I have to fall. We have to fall. And that's why I walk in life and i'll see people especially when i talk about god i just seen comments where they're like oh she talk about god but you don't dress head to toe covered yeah, and I, god, I said god loves you no matter there's what there's people that just had to you know i even went to church with these people and they were doing some crazy stuff behind closed doors it, it really is a relationship because if you try to be cookie cutter perfect all the time and never make no mistakes you're never going to know who you are and so even my separation or your divorce yeah. have to have to happen for you to even get to this conclude how, how would you have gone to this conclusion i would have never of, oh how important masculine exactly are Not, i wouldn't i wouldn't have known to the anything depth of it you might have you might have been it. walking it because you're told to do so right but to feel it you would not, in yeah, your heart experience it and be like huh okay yeah yeah you have to walk through that's why i love people we've talked about it like going through hard shit makes beautiful people yeah it like it gives you depth and like the people that don't i'm like mm, I forgot. You can it tell. sucks yeah. it sucks going through it like it's miserable yeah but damn like does it give you such 
goodness and depth that you would never receive. Like you have to you I tell women this, and even in my ebooks, I said, let your husband fall. Like women, yeah. like this was specifically the full context of what I'm saying. This is because the women that were really controlling and miserable because they're controlling everything. Yeah. Let him fall so we could figure it out. Right. And I think as humans, and we do that as parents let, too. Yeah. Let, like, them, let them. Oh, fall. that's probably really hard though. I'm not even gonna lie. No. I'm not a parent, but I can see when you know your kid gonna slip and fall on their yeah. face. Yeah. Ah, no, please. But you don't. have to let them fall. You do so they can they can figure it out and get to where they're supposed to go. What if I and I've told people this before and friends. What if him crashing that because okay for example right if your man is always speeding and getting speeding tickets okay how many times do you have to tell him he's going to keep doing it right if he if he has to get in a car crash yeah and dang near lose his life and i know that's that's maybe too some people feel sensitive towards that but if he has to crash the car for him to finally understand that let me stop speeding you got to let them figure out life because that might be the one thing that humbles him enough of dang like i need to be more responsible right right i've had a family member who was very judgmental of everybody and i love her i won't say the name but uh one day i'm gonna i'm gonna sit down with her and do a podcast with her but she got into a really bad car accident and almost lost her life it was really bad she even was saying you know okay god i'm coming home to you and God l- allowed her to live. She lived. It was a scary, scary sp- experience because she her car tumbled off of a cliff oh my God. and it flipped like eight times down to the bottom. There was a lake at the bottom. There was a boulder that stopped the car from falling into the water and she wow. was passed out. And then she woke up like 10 minutes later because she was knocked out unconscious. Every seat of the car except the driver's seat, a tree went through the back and a big boulder went through the passenger side. If she, anybody was sitting there, they would have died. So a rock hit her in the head and so she passed out and a boulder stopped and another big rock stopped her car from falling into the river and she was like this had to have been god and it made her appreciate life mm-hmm. so much if it mm-hmm. wasn't for that accident yeah because she came back a whole different person yeah you know and some people get cancer almost yeah, lost you, their life and come back a you different person. I, I think what i've realized about joy is you have to have that contrast energy to really appreciate it yeah. You can't taste the sweetness without knowing how bitter things yeah. have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, yeah, like things, shitty things happen, but it's to so that you can recognize when it's like so good, yeah. you know? Because even you were saying in the beginning, you talked about religion and people get disappointed. Yeah, and this is and and I think some some places tell you, oh, you follow God, everything's gonna be perfect. No, actually, following God is really hard. Like, yeah. he'll allow you to fall on your face because he's gonna make you the toughest soldier and yeah. very strong and very wise. Like, yeah. even us being able to sit here is because of what we're you know how we walk yeah and how we're accepting the bad and accepting the bad so i just let people know to accept the bad too yeah accept the bad and could you give yourself grace through through it and like um what would you tell your younger self i got told this before in the in the last one i dropped uh i told i said this i said wait till marriage to have sex and then the reason why i said that there's so much more depth Ooh, i want to talk about this <laughs> yeah let's do it let's do it um i said that not because of oh just you would have okay the way people will make that sound i'm gonna just say why i said that because i was already dealing with trauma yeah okay i was already dealing with childhood trauma because of the inconsistencies with my parents they were dealing with mental health issues and so i was so desperate for love that i would Mm. get with anybody yes that would show me a lot of love and i was in relationship after relationship after relationship and then my husband i met not that long later right i met him when i was 17 and we got married when i was 21 and I wish not only did I wait till probably marriage as well, because I did get married young, but if especially if you're coming from trauma from a broken family, I do think you should wait later in life. Yeah. And people argue with me, like, because I said the frontal lobe doesn't um, fully develop to 25, but I do think it wasn't until I was 25 where I finally was getting it, right? But it was because of all the trauma. Do you think it's insane that we got married before our frontal lobe? I heard lobe that was an developed? American study, though. Oh. Like in other countries. Oh, they don't believe that? Okay, yeah. Well, they know. their frontal lobe develop sooner than that huh well if you look at like the old like have you seen um romeo and juliet the original one and how it's based no, on like, original. Yeah. it's like it's like really old like almost black and white and they were 15 years old when they filmed that they talked like 40 year olds yeah they were so 
wise beyond yeah. our years. Yeah. So as we are into this generation, it does take longer. Yeah. In America, especially in America, but it could be in other countries too. But right. I heard that was an American study. Yeah. That here it takes us longer. And especially if you have trauma. Yeah. If you you shouldn't from- be doing relationship gotta, stuff. Yeah. Okay, I have some. Yeah, go ahead, that. go ahead. So I did save myself for marriage. You did? I did. I'm not going to do that again, <laughs> but I did. I'm interested. I'm interested. Yeah, okay. Here. Yeah, no, I definitely did. I saved myself for marriage. Um, luckily, it totally worked out, but like it, it, it it shocks me that people make life decisions without but I get it. I was so young, so like I'm I'm good with that. But this is my perspective on sexuality. Okay. I'm definitely going to test drive before I get married. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. Um but here's the thing. This is the thing that I think pers- in my personal view. I waited that that was really beautiful. We both were virgins when we got married, so we gave that to each other. That was a gift, and luckily it worked out. But I do think that marriage is such a big deal. I think you do really need to know your own body first. I mean, when I was so young, I didn't know. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But for now, like I know my own body so well. I know I want them to know their own body so well, and I want us to have that sexual chemistry before we get married because but I also have kids to think about like I don't want to yeah. get myself into a marriage I, I don't want to get divorced again have you, you know like I mean? had you know good relationships with the any person that you've been with after your husband like where is it healthy because I will say the reason why is I yeah like I no too young. I haven't really met anyone that wows me that much mm-hmm. I but this is what I will say that I've realized I am definitely not going to wait to get married to have sex again I'm def I will know every part of that person mm. but what I do think is to know in in regards to sexuality, I th- this and it's hard to explain this to men because I'm like I'm like listen like I'm not opposed to doing that with you, but we need to take time. And this is why, to me, the women receives. We are like I know this is weird, but it's a portal. Yeah. Men just this is not weird. We no, it's this. a portal. <laughs> First of all, it's the greatest creation that you could ever have in a spiritual sense. Like we, that is the the most powerful source of creation. And so for me to think like, you're going to let some rando dude inside you and it's an energy transfer, like sex is an energy transfer. So you don't know this person and all their trauma and all their baggage, but what they're doing is they're going to enter you and all that energy and whether dem- demons, the things that they're fighting, depression, that comes onto you in an energetic space. Yeah. So I think being so selective and so conscious yeah. of who you are having sex with, because I think it's an energy exchange yeah. and that stays with you. Yeah. Men aren't receiving. We are receiving. They're just giving. Yeah. They're just giving their shit. Well, I will say something too, because I, I, I really, the red pill move movement where uh-huh. men think that women shouldn't have sex at all now i'll say i went into and i learned the study that women it's only women not men but it was a scientific study and i will go look it up and just fact check what i'm saying um that women every every man that you have sex with their dna stays inside you for seven years yeah but for men it's not the case yeah they could sleep with a thousand women and not contain their dna yeah. for them but women can sleep with a thousand men and will contain all thousand men's dna so we are more valuable because if we lay down with yeah. you i have to also take on any consequence of like and down any conscious so i just think sex she needs to be more of a conscious um and knowing that what you're doing like yeah yeah like, i agree with that you gotta and be picky again picky. it's about the feminine masculine energy femininity is to sit back and receive mm. and that is sexually we receive and so like their energy, their their struggles, depression, anxiety, all those things are going to be transferred to you and you, Oh yes, that's it will. crazy. It will. So I'm not against, like, I just am very, like, to to have conscious sex to me is yeah, like, that's and casual is not conscious to me. Yeah. And it's just, and I'm not saying that that's bad if people want to have casual sex, but for me personally, it's like a, it's a spiritual um, thing where it's like it's an energy exchange and i want that partner to be whole and someone who i would willingly take on their stuff because i respect them and so that's that's why i would only say is like just that it's and you know you try to explain it i'm like well you know like i'm a portal it's a creation like it's it's hard to explain but like no you're right every but it is you said is right i agree they put themselves inside a 
creative portal and you're going to take on their stuff and yeah. you don't know that this person. And you're at risk That's every single insane. time of getting pregnant. Yeah. Well. So you're going to have to carry this man's seed that you don't even like. Yeah. So it's like that you don't be like more what's conscious going on about your sexual experiences to me. I agree. Um, I'm not afraid to say, tell people that. I'm not afraid. I, told I women, love that. No. I told women that you want a leader, you need a man that thinks higher than you then because you'll, you won't want to follow someone that I'm smarter than you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to I'm respect literally, your man. Yeah. I literally look at your decision making and I'm like, you I are like so no. lost, honey. And I don't want to think that of my man. Right. And I've well, dated that's men the that- when you stop respecting it. Like, yes. That if so, you don't have respect for your partner or, or look up to them. Yeah. It's not work. Like, yeah. Oh, love it. I love it. Yeah, this is such great. a good discussion. Thank you so much for collaborating yeah, with me. Thank you for I'm being so open with me too. And I love Absolutely. You. And I love that we can come like it's I think we both are like on different spectrums, but we're speaking the same language. Yes, and that's what's are. so beautiful is mm -hmm. like we can we recognize that there's like feminism did go too far. Yeah. Uh, I, in my personal opinion, I just, I think there's such a disconnect that, I, and I don't know how to heal it, but I think it's good to be talking about this. I don't think we can. I know, but we gotta, we gotta wrap up, do, but I yeah. don't think we can. I think that technology, social media, and it's just conditioned us so much and it's continuing to do so. Yeah. That, I don't know. I, I, I think that we're entering a very new age that we haven't seen, you know, yeah. in centuries. It's very like Sodom and Gomorrah right now. And I don't know what will what what could heal it. I think it. it's, it's just like, starting individual and in the homes and yeah. it's starting to talk about it more. And it's maybe we to, have to really fall again. What the nation has to fall on their face. <laughs> yeah, but I think people are awakening like are, to this. And I think having it. this discussion is like really big. And I think realizing that and. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Thank you so yes, much. You're thank the best. You. I can't wait. To well, check show. out her podcast. And yes, you guys. Do. We'll put all of our <laughs> information yeah. on. Yes. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>